This is part four of my new game guide series, Stats and Builds. This video is primarily aimed at new players. I think a lot of new players get intimidated by the stats and leveling system in Elden Ring, so I'm gonna try and explain it briefly. Vigor gives you health points. It also gives you resistance to poison, scarlet rot, and fire damage. If you wanna make things easier for yourself, you should probably be putting more points into Vigor than anything else. You want to get your Vigor to about 25 as soon as possible, then you want it to be about 40 by the mid-game. After 40, the amount of health you gain per level gets soft-capped, and then it gets soft-capped again at 60. Most characters will stop at 60 Vigor. A soft-cap is where going past that level gives you much less returns per level. For example, if you level your Vigor from 39 to 40, right before the first soft-cap, you'll get 48 more health. If you level your Vigor from 60 to 61, right after the second soft cap, you get 6 health. Mind gives you focus points, which you need to cast spells and use weapon skills and some items. It also gives you resistance to the sleep and madness status effect. How much you want to invest into Mind depends on how much you use FP. If you cast sorceries or incantations as your primary source of damage, then you want to invest in Mind but most characters who use a weapon as their primary source of damage don't need that much mind, especially because you can just use blue Estus instead of investing levels into it. If you find yourself running out of FP frequently, put more points in mind, otherwise you probably don't need it. Endurance gives you stamina, which you need for attacking, dodging, blocking, basically anything in combat. It also gives you more equip load, which allows you to equip heavier weapons and armor without being penalized with a worse dodge roll. It also gives you resistance to frostbite and bleed. Endurance is another stat that only some characters need to invest in heavily. If you want to make a tank, block a lot, or dual wield colossal weapons and still wear armor, you need quite a bit of it. But if you can already wear the armor you want, and you don't often run out of stamina, you're probably good on endurance. Before moving on to strength, I want to talk about scaling and how to make a build. All the remaining stats are used for damage scaling with regards to weapons or other equipment. You can see what stats a weapon scales with by looking at it in your inventory. The higher the scaling grade, the more damage you get for every point you have in that stat. Caps on damage gains from stats vary depending on weapons and damage type. Most characters, but not all, will pick two of the remaining five stats to be their primary damage stat. Picking more than two of these to invest in risks making your character a jack of all trades but a master of none. You'll be able to use all the equipment in the game, but your damage with that equipment will be mediocre in comparison to someone who chose that weapon and went all in on the stats that they need to scale with. After you get well over level 100, it becomes much easier to invest in more stats because you've already hit the soft caps on the stats that are most important to your character. Strength is necessary for big heavy weapons and equipment. It also gives you resistance to physical damage. Dexterity is needed for more complex weapons, or those that require skill to wield. It also decreases the casting time of spells, which makes dex the usual preference over strength for spellcasters. Intelligence is needed to cast sorceries and determines the damage you do with them. It also gives you resistance to magic damage. Faith lets you cast incantations and determines the damage that you do with those. No secondary effect. Finally, Arcane gives you higher item discovery chance and is needed for certain spells and equipment. It also gives you resistance to holy damage and the death blight status effect. Also, if you wield a weapon that scales with Arcane and inflicts a status effect, the status buildup of that will be improved by your points in Arcane. One final tip, remember to keep track of how many runes you need to gain a level, which you can see on the status screen. It's generally a good idea to spend your runes immediately so that you don't lose them. If you beat a boss or clear an area and you have almost enough runes to level up, use a couple of golden rune items just to put you over the threshold. If you don't know what stat to increase, just increase vigor. Next time I talk about catacombs.